Alright guys, we're on to proving the area rule, which fortunately is a very simple one to prove. First of all, what does the area rule say? Well, if you have a triangle ABC, unfortunately we have only been able to find the area of right angled triangles or triangles where they've given us the perpendicular height. So what happens if they don't? There must be a way to work out the area. And there is. So if I label the sides, baby A, baby B and baby C, the area rule says that the area of any triangle is a half, AB, so two sides multiplied together, multiplied by the sine of the angle between those two sides. So you'll notice it's A and B are the two sides I'm using, then I must multiply by sine angle C. Now this means that there could be three formulas for the area of this triangle, because I could say half BC, but then I'd have to use angle A because that's the angle between those two sides. And the third version is AC could be multiplied together, but then I must use angle B. So in an exam, they will say to you, in triangle, and they could name it anything they wanted, I've chosen ABC, and I've chosen to ask you to prove that the area is a half BC sine angle A. Now, that version could be any version with any letters. So if they haven't drawn you a picture, it's important for you to be able to draw the picture and set it up correctly. So if they've used sine of angle A, it's exactly the same as the cos rule. That means you should put angle A at the bottom of your triangle. And then B and C can be in any position. So I've labeled my three sides. And just as with the other two theorems, I'm constructing a perpendicular height H. Now, the area of a triangle is a half base times perpendicular height. So in this example, if I think of AB as the base, I would think of the perpendicular height as the height of this triangle. So if I use this, the area would be length C multiplied by the perpendicular height. Now the point of this is not to have height in the formula, because the point of this is to derive a formula for triangles where they haven't given you H. So I don't want an H in the formula. So how can I avoid having an H? Well, if you look, the proof we're trying to do is a half BC sine A. So we've got the half and we've got the C, but where do the B and the sine A come in? Well, sine of angle A, angle A is in a right angle triangle. And the definition of sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of angle A will be H divided by B which means I can simply rearrange by multiplying by B on both sides, and it's perfect because I can replace my B sine A, I can replace my H with that expression. So I'm done. The area is a half C, and then I've replaced H with B sine angle A. So it's a very quick and easy theorem to prove. Just make sure that you set up your picture correctly so you know which height to draw in. So let's look at an example. If I've given you any triangle, which I've labeled RST, I've given you two angles, and then I've given you one side. Now, two angles and one side, I should immediately start thinking about the sine rule, because the sine rule involves two angles and two sides. So I can possibly find a second side here. Now, the question says, determine the area of triangle RST. So, there's three ways we could find the area. It's two of the sides multiplied together times sine angle in between. So I could use the 5 centimeters and ST and then the sine of 70. Or I could use the 5 centimeters and RT and then sine of 40. Now I'm focusing on those two obviously because both of them use the 5 centimeters, which obviously is very useful. Now the only problem is I don't know ST and I don't know RT which means either one of those sides I have to first find before I can find the area. Now you'll notice that the 5 centimeters is opposite angle T because I'm immediately starting to think sine rule. Now the problem is I don't know angle T. So if I wanted you to use the sine rule, I'd need to know angle T. But don't forget, as soon as you have two angles in a triangle, you can work out the third. So I have angle 70 degrees, which is opposite my pink side, and I have angle 40, which is opposite my red side. So the sine rule can be used with either one of those angles. But first of all, to find angle T. So I did sum of angles in a triangle. I took 180 degrees, and I minused my 40 and my 70. 
So I got angle T is 70 degrees, which means I can launch into the sine rule perfectly. But before we just jump into things, as soon as I write down that 70 degrees, I realize that this is a very specific type of triangle. This means that I have two equal angles. And if I have two equal angles, it's an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, the sides opposite the equal angles are also equal. So there's no need for the cos, I mean the sine rule here. I can tell you that RT is 5 centimeters simply by knowing that sides opposite equal angles are equal. Please don't forget that you can't use the reason isosceles triangle. And now I think I'm ready to work out the area because I can use my pink sides. They're both 5 centimeters. So my area would be half the two sides, which I'm going to label S and T because they're opposite angle S and angle T, sine angle in between, which is angle R. Now you don't actually have to write down this formula. You could go straight to the next line and substitute. You don't have to go writing down the formula with the correct sides in first. Now I just picked up the calculator, I plugged that all in, and I got 8,03, and don't forget your centimeters squared.